Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys an update on the five foot drawing that I've been working on as I just passed the 20 hour mark. So what better way than to kind of show you guys where it's at and explain some of the things that are going on. Okay. So as you can see, I'm a bit scattered in the drawing and that's because I started doing pencil sketching throughout and I wanted to place certain key factors within it. And one of the biggest placeholders were these seven gates. And these are kind of acting like portals because I wanted this underwater utopia to be like an epicenter of the underwater world, kind of like a New York City where you have just a clash of cultures and there's a mixing of different type of mermaids. And it would make sense then to have mermaids that looked maybe more human and then have others that looked a little bit more sea creature-esque. And <laughs> I, I thought it would be really cool to have each of the seven gates be guarded by um, the people that lived there. And you can kind of show the difference if I wanted ones to have more of like a shark-like aesthetic or more octopus or clownfish, whatever it might be and they would be guarding their uh, portals. So I, I knew I wanted to lay them out and kind of spread them out. And I wanted them in varying distances. So like how close they are to the viewer. Because the one thing I'm already noticing is it's gonna be a struggle to render faces this small. And hers is probably the only face I've really rendered on my scene, I think. And I mean, besides the two statues here, but it is very difficult to render something that small with a pencil. And it's probably gonna be my biggest challenge throughout this entire piece. So I think I might have some more areas where I'm closer to the camera so I can make the mer people a little bigger. And I think cause my strength would be more in rendering out their face and giving you know, their bodies more life. Cause when you render so small, there's only so much detail you can get. Even if I'm using my magnifying glasses, there's only so much detail you can get when working with a pencil. So anyways, uh, I guess I can kind of show some of the different areas I've been working on and explain some of the characters here. The other thing you may have noticed is I have this border around the entire piece. And that's because I want to make a really gaudy pencil frame around the actual image, like full of shells and little secrets within it. But then where the blue tape will be, will be like a very thick, gaudy gold frame to surround the entire piece. So I'm gonna eventually have to measure this out because I've been eyeballing it, which is not the best thing to do because you never know if you might be off by a little bit. So eventually I'll do a really nice edging of the entire piece and I'll go from there. So I guess I can share some of the areas. This is gonna be kind of like a living area I, I was trying to think of what would be a cool thing for mer people to live in. So I was thinking of like these pod type homes rather than the, the ones that we're so used to where they're more boxy looking. I like the idea of having more round buildings represent like underwater living. And uh, down here, I wanted this to be like a maz, I think it's called a mausoleum or I'll, I guess I'll just say more of like a graveyard or like a memorial area. So essentially, <laughs> You would have people that would come to this area and you could uh, extract bubbles of memories that you've had with lost ones or times that were really good and you can relive them by staring into the bubble but i like the idea that this place is actually ran by a witch and she is tricking people into living in their past rather than living in their presence so i'm probably gonna have a lot of mer people around this area that seem trapped in their past including my Pearl Mermaid that I did a drawing of, I think two years ago. And I like the idea that she lost all of her children somehow and she cries pearls because her tears are so pure that I call her the mother of all pearls. So if you find a pearl, it's probably a teardrop from her. And then I might have uh, people like making a deal on um, going down or like Maybe this person I thought stole one of the bubbles and is handing it to this person that is like really desperate. But what exactly they'll trade for that bubble is kind of the scary part. <laughs> and then down here. Oh yeah. I like the idea that this is the witch's sister and she's a sorceress that kind of preys on weaker minds. And she uses these fish as her informants that are scattered throughout the piece. 
So these really ugly fish, if you look at the entire piece when it's finished, you'll find like 50 of them hidden throughout. So like here, here's gonna be another one. Where did I put another one? Let's see. Oh yeah, here's another one. So it'll be kind of a fun little hunt finding all these ugly fish. <laughs> and I like the idea that that's her power. Information is her power and she uses it against her fellow mer people. Um, this is gonna be a boy that either lost a love or uh, is going through a hard breakup and wants to relive it. So he's thinking of making a deal with either the sea witch or at the, um, the memorial area. And then actually this is based off of a statue that I had in my bathroom, but it broke. So I literally am drawing the, the little statue and her head basically broke off. So I, I thought it'd be fun to include that in this drawing. Not a lot going on on that side. And then as we get over here, you enter into this kind of artisan uh, area full of music and knowledge and artists and uh, philosophers. So this has been really fun for me to work on. And I definitely realized I need to work left to right because as cool as it is working and bouncing throughout the drawing, I'll be smearing the drawing then with my hand, even if I put something under, and I don't want to have to deal with redrawing over and over and over again because this is <laughs> this is already going to take me a really long time and I don't want a lot of the time being used just for cleanup. So I'm doing my best to work more from left to right from now on and that's why this area is the most complete. So like you can walk through the area here and then there's going to be a bunch of people at like a cafe or you know some type of where you can eat and just uh talk with fellow artisans and people of, you know, a, a, a deeper mind. And I like the idea that there's be like this underwater band with all these instruments that I have to kind of make up because underwater, obviously music would sound a little different. It wouldn't be like aerials under the sea. And then I really would like the idea of all these um, statues that kind of represent the past because I think having this kind of library-esque area uh, having just um, a representation of the past and where they've come from and to show the craft of mer people from years past would be really cool. So I'm going to include a lot of gaudy architecture in this area. And I like that this, this swirling orb is uh, like a container of knowledge and people are attracted to it. And if you just listen to it, you can learn something new. That's why I want a lot of people always flocking to this little swirly area. And then... This building, I want to be like the library. So it's kind of hard to see now, but these, it will be covered in a glass, except for this area. This will be like the door. This is where you can enter into the library. And then I really like the idea of this being, I know it's in grayscale, but imagine it being like this yellow glass that contains all these books and all this knowledge within um, the library. And <laughs> the hardest part about this has been doing the little ornamentation and decorations around it because to draw if you see this like mermaid or mer angel statue cherub baby it is about the size of my finger so to draw something that small has also proved to be quite challenging and if there's anything that has been the most challenging throughout all this it's not so much the creativity or the ideas or um, where things go it has literally been me figuring out how to draw this scale and to still have it read well. So yeah, that is what this is gonna be. And then as you can see, it kind of pulls upward into more of this very European architecture. And I want a lot of statues and just really gaudy and really fun. And I want there to be some perspective. So as you can see, some things get smaller and I want there to be like bridges in the background, even though <laughs> literally as I was doing it, I was thinking, why would they need bridges if they can just swim? But maybe just for the look of it, and uh, even here, you see how it gets really small in, in the distance. So I really want there to be a sense of scope with this drawing too. So yeah, I think that's all I can show you for today. Oh, I guess I can show you my, if you guys follow me, uh, you probably already know I have a merman that I call Tristan. So he's gonna be right here with his conch. And he just stole from his father, which is like um, King Triton. And I like the idea that he, this is the gate for King Triton's kind of royal area. And he's going to be really large and he's going to be looking through this portal. And I like the idea that his hands are like coming through a little bit. And he's like looking for Tristan and he's like trying to hide and get away. 
So I got to render this whole scene out. But I do like the idea of different sized mer people, and they're not all going to be like the same proportion size. I like the idea that some will be much larger, some will be much smaller. And I think that's because it's like this is the whole underwater utopia of mer people. So having different sizes and shapes would be really fun. Okay, I think that's all I got. So yeah, until my next update, I'll keep you guys posted. Thank you guys.